Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great as always and for anyone new to the channel. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we've got a fantastic team to feature and a big shout out to Evelyn Taylor, who is actually the person that provided this rental for us today. She reached out to me on Twitter last week asking me if I'd like to feature this team, either me or Aaron. And uh, I don't know if Aaron's actually featured it yet, but uh, I, I definitely jumped at the chance to, to feature this team. So this is a team that Evelyn uh, played in ran in the Hatterene series for those of you that don't know about the Hatterene series it is a tournament set up for uh, to welcome women and non-binary uh, relating people into uh, a tournament series into a safe environment for them to get involved in the community play Pokemon and VGC and things like that it's a really nice idea and it's really nice to kind of finally raise awareness about it on the channel I think it's something that can appeal to a lot of players uh, especially if they feel a bit more intimidated uh, when it comes to these big events and want somewhere to kind of kind of start off and, and feel like they're not in a, an intimidating environment, which it never should be. But that's a conversation for another day. But it's nice to raise awareness of it. All the links to everything like that are down below, as well as Evelyn's uh, Twitter handle. Give her a follow. She's an amazing player. And um, obviously, she did a great team report, in-depth team report over on Smogan, which I'll link as well, which is worth checking out if you're interested in this team. So getting on to the team, though. Here is the rental for it. We'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do. And then we'll finish off with the rental at the end of the episode. See how we've done. But starting off with the Double Dragons. I love Double Dragons. Obviously old school VGC player. Normally when we talk about Double Dragons, it is Salamence and Garchomp. But we're, we're, we're a bit more forward today. We're a bit more in the future. And we've got Dragapult upgrade and that. Well, is it? I don't know if it's an upgrade, but it's a variation anyway. We've got the Dragapult Garchomp. I do love that combination. I think both Pokemon doing very well in the format at the minute. And then you can see the Terrakion up next, which pairs very nicely with the Dragapult. Obviously got really good synergy there between them anyway. And you've got that beat up combination that I'm hoping we can get going in today's episode. Uh, the Celesteela, which is another really good Pokemon that's kind of really jumped up the usage stats recently. Doing extremely well. And uh, the Assault Vest variant is the option here with the Energy Ball, which is a little bit different from what you normally see on Celesteela but a really good one as well I think it gives you nice coverage against things like Rot and Wash because uh, that's something that I played in Players Club uh, that gives you a good matchup against Celesteela and you know the energy ball it doesn't it isn't as easy you know uh, and then Incineroar and Amoongus run the team off where which are just a, a brilliant staple support staple so there is a team quick intro explained everything once again a big shout out to evelyn hope you all enjoyed today's episode it's going to be a fun one and without further ado friends we'll get into our first match of today okay first up today we have a charizard mama swine whimsicott tapu lele urshifu and reggie aleki team so tapu lele is one of those pokemon that i see popping up more and more especially from japanese players at the moment so I wonder if that'll kind of start to seep over to our format as well uh, in the next coming weeks. It'll be interesting to see. It's a nice offensive Pokemon. It plays well with Charizard as well. They cover each other's weaknesses pretty well. Um, but you can see where the main kind of uh, fire point for the team is going to be from that Whimsicott with the Tailwind, uh, putting the, the Mamoswine or the Charizard or even the, the, t the Tapu Lele for sure into a really good position turn one with that Prankster Tailwind. Uh, other speed control you've got is the Regieleki with the Electro Web and um, then you've got Airstream support and it's about it for the team. So it doesn't really struggle too much in that respect it's very good very strong but obviously if we had a trick room element it wouldn't necessarily do as well now we could go with a beat up combination here but there is issues around that obviously of course with things like uh, the tailwind it puts mama swine before the terrakian and then that can cause us all sorts of issues so i think something like incineral here is good something like celesteela is is generally quite good you've got to be very careful of that charizard so it kind of lean more towards the track in here celesteela will wrap up with and then i think we'll round things off with good old garchomp they can do a decent job against most of the stuff on my opponent's team got to be careful around that tapu lele though of course and even to a certain extent the whimsicott that um if you don't deal with it uh early on uh quickly enough well enough um then it can come back to kind of bite us a little bit because the the Wimmy Tapulele like board position there won't be good for Garchomp if we've got that out on the field. But we are thankfully seeing that as a lead here for my opponent. Uh, 
Incineroar in a really good spot and it gives us the option to switch straight into something like Celesteel here that'll be able to like absolutely just have a field day in front of these two fairies. Um, but we've got to be careful because I think the one thing that we want to do is try and keep tracking for that potential Charizard that could be kicking around in the back that would cause us all sorts of issues. So got a few options here we can uh, we can't go for fake out obviously we can go for flare blitz taunt um or the parting shot i feel like a parting shot into the table lily might be not a bad idea and uh, then we can get something like terrakion back onto the field if we want and then that allows us to switch incineral back in uh, or we can go for uh, the garchomp as well which may give us a, a slightly different option you know but you've got to watch out um i think the thing that the big thing to note here is the tapalele in most of these kind of builds is normally spec so it is going to be hitting pretty hard the one positive that you don't get from tapalele when you're facing it though is have to worry about uh, expanding force because it doesn't get access to that move um yeah travesty travesty because i think if tapu lily got expanded force it would be everywhere unfortunately it didn't um i would have loved it too you know i think it deserves to we're seeing the moon blast into the the celestial here and we do take a pretty hefty chunk of damage there but um it's not terrible um i think the thing that we want to try and do is remove uh the whimsicott from the field as quick as we can you know um We'll just bring in Terrakion. We've already shown Terrakion to our opponent, so there's no point of revealing our last Pokemon. We can keep them guessing for a little bit longer. Uh, I think we pull... I mean, we've got a couple of options here. We can potentially just protect. Just protect Terrakion here. It's not a bad play. And then just go for the Flash Cannon into um, into the Tapu Lele. We don't need to max, and I don't think we max because... I think if we max, we kind of limit ourselves on what we can we can do going forward. Because maybe the Charizard hits the field, right? And then if we're max with Celesteela, we're kind of limited. Terrakion not on the greatest of spots. Um, so it's, it's kind of better almost if we just buy that time a little bit. Do you see the Moon Blast come out from Tablele into the Steel? No switches though. So the Flash Cannon should pick up the knockout here. Uh, ooh, Tablele just hanging on. It does mean that we're going to have to probably switch tracking out to Incineroar here. Um, could max Rockfall. We could max Airstream as well. Uh, have they got the Tailwind set up? I'm sure they have, right? Yeah, they got the Tailwind up. So what we want to potentially do is go max... Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just go for another Flash Cannon into Whimsicott. Then switch in Incineroar. Like I say, I don't really want to like pull the trigger too quickly on maxing. Like there's a, there's a there is the the, uh, the temptation here to just max Celesteela, but I do worry about potential Charizard in the back, and I don't want to get rid of the Lele in particular um, too quickly because it means that my opponent can get that Charizard onto the field. We kind of want to remove the Whimsicott before this. Um, tailwind ends, so we've got, we've got we're in a good spot, yeah. Now where we can we can kind of do that where we could max Celesteela this next turn, and then that would put us ahead of the the Charizard, the potential Charizard coming in. Um, and we can't get like sideline by like what the yeah. I think okay. What we're gonna do is potting shot. Out onto the Tapu Lele, Max, Max Airstream. The Tailwind ends. We're going to put ourselves at plus one. We should outspeed the majority of things on, on my opponent's side of the field, except, except the Regieleki, of course, which we can't get the jump on. It doesn't matter how many speed boosts we get. Well, I mean, if we get... No, uh, I don't know. I don't even know if... Well, with three, with three, I don't think it would. <laughs> we need, like, Tailwind behind us as well, I think. Reggie like he's just so ridiculously fast, right? But we'd at least outspeed the Charizard if it comes onto the field without that um, without the Tailwind support. We've got to watch out for Electro Web if that is the the other thing to think of. Charizard's definitely in the back. You can you, you know it. The sunny day coming out, you can feel it. Um, there's a Moonblast again at being to Incineroar, but this is all right because we'll get Terrakion onto the field. Um, and we'll get the airstream. So 
It's not the worst. And if Incineroar goes before... No, I didn't think so. Be nice if Incineroar went before us there. Uh, because then we can Parting Shot, get the speed boost on track in as well. Which just gives us a little bit more leeway going, going into the next turn at least. But it's fine. Um... I don't expect it to be scarfed Lele though. I don't think it's scarfed Lele. It is minus two now, regardless of whatever it is holding. I'm sure it's a specs though, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's specs. So we'll get Tarakian back onto the field. And like I say, we've got the Garchomp in the back just in case the Regieleki decides to pop its head up at any point. And then we can kind of protect Celesteela that way. Their Tailwind Pit is out. Plus one with Celesteela. And I would expect well, maybe not the Charizard now. Not the Terrakians out on the field. It's probably like, oh, I don't really want to come out. I want to come out just yet. Oh, it does. Wow, brave. <laughs> brave old Charizard. Uh, we just click the Rock Slide button. And we'll go for the Max Rockfall as well. Because we, like I say, we'll outspeed the Charizard with Celesteela. We've got the Assault Vest. We'll take away the Sun. Double, double Rock into the Charizard. Don't matter what kind of Charizard it is. Even if it's got the Charty Berry, it's going down this turn. Unless I'm pleasant, well, if I'm completely surprised, I don't think I will be. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is why I, I would have expected maybe something like the Regieleki to come in here. because I, That's what I, I expect my opponent to have in the back, you know. Could be Urshifu as well, you know. Uh, Urshifu probably doesn't want to come in. But I think since you got the sun set up, it's, um, you want to try and make the most of your Charizard. But uh, unfortunately, not going to be the case. Is Celesteela proving with that very well-timed airstream. We're uh, getting the jump and tracking and doing all the work that we needed to. And then my opponent down to the last Pokemon. So, yeah, you know. I think the thing is, like, with, when you've got something like Celesteela, you've gone up against it. You've got to really try and um, get your speed control. Up and then make use of your big powerhouse Pokemon like your Charizard. You need to get it onto the field in a trick room. And there was plenty of times where my opponent had the opportunity to do that. Where we're switching around because we're in an awkward spot with what we led potentially, you know. Uh, we'll go for a Cloth Combat and an Airstream. And that will be game, unfortunately, for my opponent. A pretty quick one for us to kick off with today. But very nice one, all the same. So good game to my opponent as they cancel the first battle, but uh, we get to have a good showing from the Terrakian, from the Celesteela to kick us off with today, which is always nice. So with that, friends, uh, we'll jump straight into our next game of the episode. Okay, next up today, we have a Reggie Alecki, Whimsicott, Mamoswine, Moltres, Dracovish, and Chandelure. So all the things that you don't want to see, you've got the imprisoned trick room there to stop any potential trick room set up, although we don't have it. Uh, you've got lots of speed control, though. That's a big thing for us here, supporting uh, predominantly going to be the Moltres, the uh, Mamoswine and the Dracovish. Dracovish, one of those Pokemon that we just don't want to have to entertain really, um, especially in a Tailwind because it can do all sorts of nasty things to us. Um, I think we really need to concentrate on shutting down the Tailwind early doors if we can. And we need a Pokemon that's going to kind of support us well enough in being able to do that. Obviously, if we bring the Dragapult, the Moltres causes us a few issues. Um, the Terrakian, obviously the Mamoswine causes a few issues. Celesteela feels like the best kind of bet. Although, doing that, uh, a lead of either Regieleki or Chandelure could cause us a few problems in that respect. But I think, well, we've got switches, haven't we? We've got switch ins for, for those for those problems um i think garchomp is needed here just for the moltres and the regieleki you've got to be careful around um the mamoswine in particular and then it comes down to our last pokemon do we want amoongus for the redirection which could be really useful against something like dracovish just protecting uh other pokemon as well from Things like Ice Shard, especially if we've got Garchomp out on the field. I don't know if we'll... We'll, we'll see what my opponent leads. It'll, it'll kind of surmise if we want to max early on with Celesteela and kind of start stacking those um, Airstreams, Beast Boosts if we can. Or if you want to switch things up to the Garchomp, maybe. I think the four we've got kind of help out a lot. And this is this is one of those teams that we've seen a lot of like the the, the Pokemon like Moltres, things like uh, Galarian. 
um, sorry, Glaren Moltres and the Mama Swine kind of pick up a lot of usage recently, you know. Uh, it makes sense to see the Reggie Alecki come out with the Whimsicott. Now, they've got a couple of options here where they could potentially help in hand into the Incineroar slot, um, expecting us to switch Celesteela to Garchomp. Um, I feel like we pull a double switch here, if I'm completely honest. I think we go Garchomp, and I think we... We preserve Celesteela for later on in this game, bringing Amoongus. Because if they go help in hand, Thunderbolt, or help in hand, Max. Um, Lightning into the Celesteela. At least Amoongus are going to be able to take that a lot better. And if they do try and kind of scout us out with going after the Incineroar, thinking that the Celesteela is going to switch to Garchomp, then at least we kind of catch them out in that respect. We're just going to see a Protect here from the Whimsicott. And a Thunderbolt into, yeah, Amoongus. Now the problem is, now we can Rage Powder, but the, the issue with Rage Powdering right now is we can't really get around um, the Whimsicott uh, because it is a grass type and it is immune to powder moves. Yeah, I'm sure you all are aware of that. But uh, we'll try and get Incineroar back onto the field because then it gives us that active fake out which gives us a little bit of room around the Whimsicott in particular. We don't worry so much uh, with Garchomp in front of the Reggie Alecki at the minute but we can't really stop this Tailwind and the, the one player would be worried about here is Tailwind Vault Switch um, into Mama Swine. Now we're just going to see the Thunderbolt which is fine. It's not fine because it does ridiculous amount of damage um but it doesn't look like we're gonna see yeah the, the tailwind just yet and we do have the opportunity where we can potentially i don't know if i want to max don't know if i want to max maxing maxing kind of limits our ability on what we're about to do we could just because the rock fall is not going to get the whimsicott and there's a likelihood that, it, that you just protect. Or we could fake out onto the Reggie Alecki this turn. Let them Tailwind. I don't know if they Moonblast. Do they Moonblast? No, they do. They Moonblast. They go after Garchomp. Oh, that's a bit, that's a bit annoying. Huh. Okay. Oh, that's not ideal. Whimsicott. This is a problem with Wimmy. Okay, let's go Moongus. Incineroar going to go down though. That's the issue. Um, Alright, let's go. Garchomp to Celesteela. And Incy to Amoongus. And that gives us full protection and a good board position where we can maybe airstream the following turn. Max airstream into Wimmy. Rage Powder with Amoongus. Because we're in a bit of a bind against this Wimmy that's just deciding to be a bit more offensive. Um, my opponent getting so much damage on the field. Is that Specs Alecky as well? I, is it? I don't know. Maybe Magnet. Okay. And there's the Moonblast. So now we go for the Airstream. This is where they Tailwind, I think. <laughs> uh, and we Rage Powder. The other thing that they could potentially do is is max Reggie Alecki here and um, get the electric train up so they can just nuke the Moongus to fall into it. Although, two Thunderbolts is going to get us, regardless of what, what they do, you know? So let's see if we can, uh, we can pull ourselves out of the mire in this situation against these two really frustrating Pokemon. Uh, okay, help in hand. Well, no Tailwind, which makes things a little bit easier. We do get the Rage Powder. Uh, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to take a Thunderbolt. Reggie Alecki's so bust, isn't it? Yeah, we just about, just about. Um, and we get the Whimsicott, finally, thankfully. Gosh, gosh, gush, 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 gush. And I mean, the next turn we can go Rage Powder. And go into the Alecky. The issue would be if we see Mama Swine come out onto the field now. And then Ice Shard causes a bit of an issue. Because then Ice Shard gets rid of the Amoongus. And then 
Obviously, if the Reggie Alecki decides to max and go after the Reggie, uh, the, the Celesteela, then that's the Draco Vish. Okay. Still kind of one of those situations where it's it's very similar to before. Um, because we're going to take a Thunderbolt, whatever we do. I think we've got an Airstream again. Airstream should get a Lecky if it doesn't max. We Rage Powder. What's maxing? It's going to be Reggie Lecky. Reggie Lecky. It will outspeed the Draco Vish. It will outspeed the Draco Vish. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to get the knockout onto it this turn, I don't think. Uh, uh, not so good. Not so good. Unless the Draco Vish at speeds and then the Alecky's quite slow. Nah. Not happening. Bosh. And that's not what we want to see. That is definitely not what we want to see. Um. Hmm. Unless a plus one will get the Reggie Alecky. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think it will though. Oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> Very surprised by that. Very surprised. Celesteela doing all the good stuff. So we get rid of the Regieleki, which is amazing. We're going to take a big old fat vicious rend. Ooh, Psychic Fangs. Huh. You're going after the, the, the Moongus there, potentially. Um, well, 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 did we just bring in Garchomp now? I think we just bring in Garchomp. Because we can max airstream it, protect if we need to. Oh, yeah, okay. That's a little bit more tricky. Hmm. Well, we know the Garchomp will outspeed the, uh, the Dracovish. We can just go for, do we go for a Rockfall? Steel Spike, Steel Spike's probably better. Yeah, Steel Spike and go for an Incineroar switch. We can get an Intimidate onto the Dracovish, but we're obviously not going to be able to onto the uh, the Mama Swine. But we'll be able to get a Steel Spike defense boost, which will kind of put Celesteer a bit out of reach for both these Pokemon to be able to kind of hit. Um, so, protect from the Mama Swine, that's fair enough. Yep, I'm going to take a nice fat chunk there. Get that defense boost. And then now what we get? Another Psychic Fangs. Is it locked in? Has it locked itself into Psychic Fangs? That would not be ideal. Um, if it has, that's really bad news for it. We'll go for an Air Slash into the Dracovish. And then we'll go for a Fake Out into the Mammal. Because it looks like they're banded. Yeah. Okay, well that wraps it up and that uh, we see a nice bit of the team there as well. So very good game to our opponent and uh, two nice games today. We get to see a bunch of the team, which is always good. And um, we'll wrap up now with that rental code, friends. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. A massive shout out again to Evelyn for uh, providing us with this team. And anytime you have a team that you'd like to see featured, Evelyn, this is a, just a one-off just to say it, that anytime you do have a team, we'd love to feature it. It's been a lot of fun playing this team today. Obviously, didn't get that beat-up combination off like we would have liked to. But if you do try the team out and you get it and successfully get that gone, then let me know. Because it is a hard one to get off. Now everyone's kind of aware of it. People know how to lead against it. It's not as easy. And it feels like more of a late game thing uh, to try and to try and utilize but i think the team in general is amazing the celesteela works so well with everything the moonga still proves like it's it's one of the best pokemon in the format i think it's supporting especially alongside the incineral just so good disruptively and giving you room to kind of get your big powerhouses on the field and start doing stuff i love the uh, life orb dragapult as well because you've got the beat up option there but you've also got the option where you can max dragapult in certain situations where it's more favorable um, and the guard chomp with the white herb a nice option there to kind of get around the intimidate support uh, that your opponent's going to kind of throw out at you 
on the car shop most of the time really great team had a lot of fun with it hope you've enjoyed it friends if you have leave your comments down below and uh, definitely give evelyn a, a follow over on twitter and uh, check out the hatterene series if you're not familiar with it already so thank you so much have a great rest of your day we'll be back soon with more vg action so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye